Hi, my name is Emma, and in this video series, I'll be sharing with you about Archivmatica, the digital preservation software. In this series of videos, we'll walk through how Archivmatica works and what it does, starting with the Transfer tab, the Ingest tab, and the Archival Storage tab. We'll wrap things up with a video about the Preservation Planning and Administration tabs, where you can learn about how to configure your own Archivmatica installation. But before we get into the different parts of Archivmatica, let's talk a little about what Archivmatica is and what it does. I'll share an overview here, but if you want to know more about how Archivmatica works, you can also take a look at the documentation, which is linked below this video. Archivmatica is a web-based, standards-based, open-source application. It allows your institution to preserve long-term access to trustworthy, authentic, and reliable digital content. In packages that are self-contained, self-describing, and system agnostic. But let's break each of these points down a little. Web-based means that once your instance is installed and configured, you can sign in to your Archivmatica web dashboard through a web browser. Standards-based refers to the standards and specifications that surround how Archivmatica functions and the ways that it captures metadata. One of the most important specifications is the Open Archival Information System Reference Model, or OAIS, which is the reference model upon which Archivmatica is based. The OAIS was developed to facilitate a broad discipline-independent consensus on the requirements for an archive or repository to provide long-term preservation of digital information, which is why it's at the heart of Archivmatica. In slightly more concrete terms, this means that content enters Archivmatica and is processed into a Submission Information Package, or SIP, then has preservation actions performed on it to generate an Archival Information Package, or AIP, for long-term storage. Optionally, Archivmatica can also generate a Dissemination Information Package, or DIP, for use in an access system. Archivmatica also uses Dublin Core, METS, and Premise to record descriptive, technical, and preservation metadata, bag it for packaging, and the Pronom Registry to identify file formats. More on this later. Open source means that the code that underlies Archivmatica is free to download, use, modify, and share. You can go to our GitHub repositories right now and contribute if you'd like. So what do institutions use Archivmatica for? This is the last part of Archivmatica's tagline to preserve long-term access to trustworthy, authentic, and reliable digital content. When you use Archivmatica, you can preserve your content in a self-describing, system-agnostic, normalized format so that it will remain accessible and understandable long into the future. One last point of clarification. What we call Archivmatica is just part of the overall digital preservation process taking place. Archivmatica is a workflow engine that performs preservation actions based on user input or configuration by bringing together open source tools and scripts. This results in the production of an AIP. On the screen, you can see what the microservices that reflect these different preservation actions look like on the Archivmatica dashboard. There's also a separate component of the system called the Archivmatica Storage Service. This is what provides Archivmatica with access to your original content for processing into an AIP and to your AIP storage location to move packages into long-term preservation storage. In that sense, Archivmatica isn't itself a repository. The AIPs and DIPs it generates can be viewed through Archivmatica, as you'll see in the fourth video, but the storage service is what connects them to separate storage. So to recap, in this video, we discussed what it means that Archivmatica is web-based, standards-based, and open source, broadly how Archivmatica performs preservation actions, and how Archivmatica fits into the overall digital preservation picture. You can take a look at the next video where we'll begin the process of creating an AIP and talk about the steps to begin a transfer, as well as the microservices that are carried out on content in the transfer tab.